Hi and welcome to A Drummer's Guide to the podcast all about the things that it takes to be a professional musician aside from playing your instrument. So my name is Emily Dunn Davis, I am a drummer by trade and yeah, I just like to lift the curtain a little bit on what it is to be a professional musician and if anything just to make you feel less alone because it can be very isolating this job and uh, you can feel like you're the only one struggling when trust me we're all struggling here and it's fine we're all friends you're safe here <laughs> so today i'd like to talk on something specific uh and that is instagram so i spoke fairly recently about generally social media and kind of how to leverage that as best you can but I just wanted to talk specifically about Instagram um, and this has come off the back of a couple of students of mine uh, talking about their Instagram feeds and some some things that they I mean there's a few of them who all had very similar reactions to how I presented um, how to use Instagram, how best to think about it, if you like. Uh, and there were some real, like, aha moments, if you like. And I was just like, I keep saying the word like a lot, don't I? Hmm. So I thought, let me share it with you guys as well. And maybe it will resonate with some of you, one of you. If it's only one of you, that I've done my job. That's it. I'm happy. <laughs> so let's talk about Instagram. Um, I know that it can be a real confusing thing, very overwhelming, like knowing what to post, feeling unmotivated, you know, everyone says post consistently and you'll be fine. Okay, yeah, but what? <laughs> like, what am I posting? Um, I don't know. Here's a picture of my meal. Uh, here's me playing my instrument. Uh, here's a picture of a rehearsal room. Oh, here's me and my partner going on a hike somewhere. Um, now, whilst that's fine in some contexts, I think it's good to have an overall picture of why you're posting. Um, you know, and then, look, I will go into a few different contexts because it really does matter what you're after through using Instagram, if you like. Uh, so for me personally, the way that I see Instagram is it is my personal marketing platform. I get to present myself to the world as I want to in the vein of how I want to be not just seen it's not about that for me what it is is the the job that I do so um if you'd have looked at my Insta in fact if you scroll down in my Instagram you will see the different iterations of me as a drummer quote unquote drummer um, I don't know why quote unquote drummer I'll tell you why I've done that in a second so if you go back say I don't know two years most of the pictures videos and all of that is to do with uh playing live whether it be with kim wilde whether it be on the voice kids whether it be in the studio however in the last six months if you scroll back it's more about coaching and helping other people uh become professional musicians supporting those that are already in the professional sphere so the content is very very different very very different um and uh, it's one of the things that i do struggle with if i'm honest like because there are a few different hats that i wear should we say and fi literally and figuratively i should have worn a hat today just for that to line alone but there we are uh so <laughs> the first thing that i will do when it comes to my Instagram and I find this very difficult to kind of like commit to one thing um, definitely but I know that it is essential it is essential and as if you want to talk about marketing and using Instagram as your own marketing platform there needs to be a sense of cohesion um, cohesion cohesiveness uh, coherence <laughs> all the co's uh, coherence in what you're presenting to people. So the number one thing that I will ask, like there's a few things I ask myself. So the first thing is, who is it for? Who am I posting for? And this is the main thing that has been the aha moments for the students that I work with, where I'm like, right, who are you posting for? Because, and it's really interesting because me, uh, when I start working with someone, it, as long as I don't know them beforehand, like if they're a fairly new person to me, I will look at their Instagram as fresh eyes and I can honestly tell them how they're coming across like what they're presenting to me as now this might be okay so and you know obviously there's never an, any offense sort of take um sorry implied or anything like that uh like that isn't my intention 
But I'm able to be honest, I can be like, alright, so you say that you're a drummer? Um, I see three pictures of drum kits and the rest is just life stuff, which is fine. Um, but, you know, there's nothing of you playing. Um, to me, you present, like, your bio is a bit random, there's some random quotes in there, I don't know what they mean. Um, to me, you're presenting as, you know, you're just a dude or a girl that plays drums as a hobby. That's how it looks from your Instagram. Like, because the thing is, here's the reality. Say you meet someone out and about, and they're like, ah, oh, I'm looking for a drummer, and you're a drummer. And maybe you exchange details. And the first thing that I know that I do when I meet someone and I connect with them, I'm like, I'm going to check them out and see what's going on online. If I see that they said that they're a drummer, but their Instagram tells me that they look like a hobbyist drummer, I ain't going to call them for something because it's like, well, you don't take this seriously. And that's fine. That's no judgment. That's no negative. It's just the way it is. So I move on and I'm like, maybe, maybe I've got that wrong. Maybe they're not the right person for this. So who are you posting for? I had another student who was mainly posting uh, uh, guitar like um, videos and pictures but the way that it presented was that it was for other guitarists not for other musicians or for artists that wanted to book them so you know things like that really you know important things so another uh, again this was a drummer actually he was posting a lot of um, pad work, so practicing on a practice pad. And I was just like, you present as a drum teacher, is that what you're going for? And he's like, no, I want to be out playing live more. And I was like, okay, well then, just so you know, this is how you're presenting. So it's very useful to kind of like, just take a look at what you're posting and who is it for? Is it, if you're a drummer, is it for other drummers because you're a teacher? Yes, is that in line? Okay, great amazing you're doing your job amazing but are you looking to play live more okay so yes make sure you're posting more stuff of you playing live and 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 presenting as a professional musician this is what you're doing day in and day out um alternatively if you're literally just posting for your family and friends that's okay too that is not a problem and but it's just recognizing that depending on who you're presenting to should really inform what you're presenting <laughs> you know like it, it's 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 you need to speak to your ideal follower it's so important and I think people just think the posting super, superfluous things is good enough and it's not it's not because how are you going to stand out you need to be presenting as you are, as you want to be, you know? Um, so the second thing that I think is worth sort of like just thinking about is why are you using Instagram? Are you using it, for instance, to get more work? Or are you, like as a session musician, say, um, or as a teacher, are you establishing it as, um, sorry, are you using it to establish yourself as an artist? There was a guitarist that I was talking to recently and he was like, he's very young and he's just like, you know, I want to be an artist in my own right. And that is why I'm posting on Instagram. I'm like, cool, amazing. It presents like that. Like you are in line with what you're aiming to do. So kudos, because a lot of people aren't often. So, um, and then again, maybe, sorry, excuse my my robot has finished doing its hoovering because I like to have a little robot doing my hoovering. <laughs> Cause I'm rubbish. I don't like hoovering. Um, so anyway. But again, if you're using it just to keep in touch, to connect with family and friends, well, yeah, okay, you're going to be posting very, very, very different content. And, and it's, it's not so important to be like, all that matters there is just posting whatever, like life stuff, you know? So, um, but again, if you're, if you're looking to using social media to gain more of a professional presence and to get more work, then that is going to change what you post. And that brings me on to the next thing. <laughs> so, what should you be posting or how should you be posting? So to me, there's like an equation that I've made up in my head essentially. So what you want to do is you want to take into account who is it for? So who is your ideal follower? Plus 
why are you using it like what is your goal are you trying to get more work are you trying to establish yourself as a session musician professional musician are you trying to be an artist in your own right whatever that thing is for you are you trying to be a teacher whatever that is that thing is for you so plus those two things together put them in brackets you can tell that i used to like maths i'm not very good at it actually so put those in brackets but then times that by the concept of using social media for one purpose well, i say one it's actually three in one and that is to get people to know like and trust you so that to me is what social media is for is to build connections with people and as long as you know who you're trying to talk to what the outcome is that you're trying to gain and then you just in that context post things to get people to know like and trust you you're on to a winning formula for me absolutely and in terms of what you should be posting in that context i think that there's a few different things so the first thing is your skills so i mean it seems really obvious so if you're looking to do more touring work you want to be posting more shots or videos of you playing live uh, and just showcasing how you play live and i think if you do that you will find how you're if you're more if you're purposeful about that and you give yourself a critical eye for instance if you're playing a gig and it you filmed it and say you watch it back and you go it's not very dynamic it's a bit boring or maybe you shouldn't post that if you're thinking that then maybe go back and like film the next gig and maybe be a little more dynamic see if it looks more interesting now this isn't just for the sake of instagram this is for the sake of your actual professional career because why do people hire you to play live well to be able to play fine but that's kind of a baseline that is the basic thing that you should be offering people like if you're rocking up to an audition you better be able to play <laughs> like this is a given but if you want to get hired and you want to be playing live on tour you need to be entertaining and engaging and captivating to an audience or be able to connect with the artist you need to bring something to the table now if you're not able to show that in, in, on instagram that tells me you're not doing it <laughs> so do it start doing it capture it post it showcase yourself in the best way that you can because this is your chance this is your chance to literally present yourself as you want to be seen i was talking to someone about this the other day like when i was coming up you literally instagram was not a thing youtube was not a thing like it was just the only way that you got work was by getting out there and playing with people now or playing with people and getting people down to gigs to come and see you. What that meant was, A, you had to play a great gig. Secondly, <laughs> A and two, two, you had to make sure that that gig was in line with whatever gig that they were after someone on. And if someone happened to see you in a gig that maybe you weren't that keen on, maybe that you wouldn't want to spend the whole of your life doing, they may book you for that same sort of genre and that may become something that you became known for now that was my worst nightmare and what happened with social media was it just opened up my world in terms of just being able to actually say this is who i am this is why i want you to hire me and that autonomy that was created because of social media i just think is phenomenal and look, let's there's no bones about it there are negative sides to social media there are negative sides to everything but if you can see it in a way that it empowers you why wouldn't you leverage that i just don't understand i understand it can be a pain people you know, don't want to do social media i get it i really do it's a job it is part of your job but when i t maybe it's because i've had you know part of my career without social media so i know how hard it is and how it, it's so much more difficult it's well i found it more difficult at least i definitely did to be seen and taken seriously um you know you only your your network was only as wide as the people that knew you and had played with you now your network can be thousands of people wide and it's just if not more you know tens of thousands hundreds of thousands even um 
it's just so empowering. I just think it's so empowering. So anyway, sorry, I've kind of gone off on a tangent there, but yes, the skills, the skills side of stuff, I think, again, if say you want to be doing more studio work, film yourself in the studio. What's the thing about studio work? It's the sounds, showcase your sounds. It doesn't need to be big and dynamic. It's very different from playing a live gig. It can be a little bit entertaining and dynamic, that's fine, but sounds that's what it's going to come down to you're going to get hired because of how your feel your touch what you can offer the world brilliant so that's that if you're teaching um i always cite this person because i think he just does it so fantastically mike barnes when it comes to finding a teacher it's not just about what you're teaching again there are hundreds thousands of teachers thousands but it's about your personality and it's not about being the best personality or the coolest personality or anything like that. It's about the personality that gels with your potential student. So you need to show yourself as that. And Mike Barnes does, I think his handle is at Mike Barnes Drums. He does a fantastic job of showing himself to be this happy, positive, enthusiastic drum teacher. And if I was starting out drums again, I would go to him 100% because I just love his vibe. I think he's so cool. Um, so yeah, I think it's just about really showcasing yourself in the way that you want to with your skills. And again, in the context of knowing, liking and trusting. Um, and again, so let's go back to this Mike Barnes thing. So not only his skills as a teacher, they're pretty obvious, like he can do the job, but for me, something that I think a lot of people really don't lean into, the mic does, and I feel I do definitely as well. I mean, look at me, I'm chatting at you for however many hours you've been listening to this podcast, and thank you for that, can I just say. It's lovely to, it's so interesting. In fact, no, yeah, no, it is. I'm just gonna go on this little tangent real quick. It's so interesting to me when people reach out, for instance, for coaching, and they say, I've been listening to your podcast for the last however many years, and I'm like, amazing because what that does is it already starts us out feeling like we know each other a little bit and not only do I feel I can be a hundred percent myself because this is who I am on this let's face it like I just don't have the energy to start um yeah putting on any facades it's not worth it in this life um <laughs> but yeah anyway because I've done that thing of showing my personality it's attracted people to me that are similar to me like similar kind of weird because look I don't think I'm sitting here going I'm very normal I'm not normal but I have a lot of um also like quirks to me but there are a lot of people with similar quirks and that really kind of um I don't know we're on a same similar frequency should we say and it's really lovely for me when people reach out because we have a conversation that is very there's a lot of flow that is involved and you know if you're meeting someone cold for the first time oh my god that can that's very unusual to have that element of flow straight off the bat very unusual um in fact i could probably count on my hands the amount of time that's happened from cold to like oh cool you're my kind of person um so that kind of i guess it speeds up the relationship in a way and and i mean that in a way of whether it's going to work or not going to work so if it's not going to work they're not going to get in touch that's fine i mean ignorance is bliss anyway i'm fine with that but i know that if someone gets in touch and goes hey i've been listening to the podcast i want you to do some i want us to just do some coaching together i already know that we're going to get on because there's something about the way that i talk or my personality that's jived with you and that's lovely like it's a very privileged position that i get to be in um of course i mean i do my side of the bargain which is putting out these episodes every week or thereabouts um but yeah it's just a really um what's the word I don't know it, it just it just it brings more flow to my life and my career and that's not just as the case with coaching it's the same with the gigs that I do and that I've done in the past if you look at my gig trajectory if you like and look at the fit and the personalities it went from sort of doing a job with people that were fine and some people I really got along with it was like they were lovely I consider them family I always will do there's certain there's particular people that I'm thinking about that it's so weird I spent you know a year with them and then I haven't spoken to them since but literally I will tell you now there are people that I feel like are my brothers and sisters and I would do anything for if they reached out to me right now I'd be like absolutely 100% whatever you need 
um, but we're not in touch. It's such a strange relationship that you sort of develop with people that you tour with. But anyway, um, it's gone from sort of gigs and people that on the whole aren't in alignment with who I am and, and that's for a myriad of reasons. But if you come right up until present day in the gigs that I've done, the people that I sort of surround myself with, they are all the best. They're so weird. I love them so much. I mean that with all the love in the world. Like they are just the best and we have the best time and we laugh and we just connect and we put the world to rights. And like, I don't know, I just love it. They, they enrich my life in a way that, you know, I haven't had in the past. And that is because I've put myself out there in terms of like, allowing my personality out and again this is also a really interesting thing so i was talking to one of my students the other day and <laughs> he was saying to me he was like how are you so good at talking on camera like i didn't realize like basically he was trying to film a video to camera for a thing that he's doing and he was like i found it so hard i had to edit it i could it was a minute and a half and i couldn't i couldn't just do a minute and a half straight how how do you do this for like half an hour an hour where you're just like monologuing and i'm like Honestly, I've just done it a lot and, and I have various things that I sort of have done to make myself feel more comfortable. And then I sent him the first ever to camera piece that I did uh, on YouTube. And um, it's, it's this series that I did and I looked, it was nine years ago, which seems crazy. It doesn't seem that long ago. But anyway, it's Ask M is the series. It's still up if you wanna watch it. <coughs> if you just search for uh, on my channel, Ask M. A-S-K-E-M. Um, I can't even remember what the first topic was. It might have been playing with the darkness, something like that. And uh, in fact, I think it was. Um, <laughs> and when I tell you like the forcedness of that version of me, oh, you can just feel the discomfort and the tension. And uh, I did this thing where at the time it was a stylistic choice because there was this YouTuber that I watched and what he would do is cut out all the dead space, which I don't know why he did that, but I quite liked it stylistically. It made it quite interesting. Um, so I did that, which by the way, so much work, so much effort, so not worth it. But watching it back, it makes it very jarring, very jarring. But you can see like the, yeah. Also weirdly, I have braces on it, which is really funny. Um, but yeah, anyway, I don't know what, what the point of this was, aside from that, I didn't used to always be very good at this. But I think being able to let people into your personality is only gonna serve you. It's scary. It's really, really scary being that vulnerable and honest. Um, and that's the only way to do it, by the way. Don't be putting on any facades. People can see straight through it. Like I said, that initial video that I did, I can see straight through the, it's not even the person that I'm trying to present, it's just the fear of not being perfect. Like if you wanna talk about perfectionism um, embodied or fear of not being perfect, that video is such a great representation. <laughs> I've made a decision. I'm going to start answering questions that I've been getting in through my website and over the years through Twitter and Facebook and anywhere else that I'm at. And the first one I'm going to answer is from someone called Mark Warner. He has asked me what was it like playing with the darkness and what was my favourite song. Playing with the darkness was exactly as you'd expect it to be. It was the crazy, energetic, so much fun and um, great songs, just sort of rock and roll energy, fans are brilliant, always giving it all. It's like one big party on stage, I guess, so really good fun gigs. And as for my favourite songs to play, uh, there are a few, Mudslide off the new album, but that's because I got to scream a lot in it in the chorus, so that was always really good fun. Uh, Get Your Hands Off of My Woman, love that song, and playing it live was just even better, so that's definitely one of my favourites. I believe in a thing called love, that's because I used to play it so much in covers bands so it was kind of quite ironic that I was now playing it with the band that actually wrote it and performed it and uh, yeah so that was a really nice thing to do. That's my question for the day. Any more? Go to my website it's emilydrums.com forward slash ask and um, whatever you want to ask me no matter how random you go for it. Look forward to the next one tomorrow. <laughs>
in my body and the way that I'm talking is so oh, tense. It's horrible. It's horrible to watch, but it's a very interesting watch. If you want to look at it psychologically or whatever, feel free. Please feel free. I'm almost tempted. Maybe I'll put a link to it in my uh, in the description. I'll do that. Um, but yeah, it's just really interesting. But the more I did it, the more comfortable I got. Look at me now. I'm just sat here. Even if you look at the very first episodes of this, there's a lot more tension involved. There's a lot more uh, ums and ahs and all this. Whereas now I'm a little more comfortable with not filling the silence, which is good. It's good for life too, can I just say. Although I still find it difficult. But the, yeah, just showing my personality here is definitely afforded me more uh, work that is uh, and more students and more gigs that are in line with what I deem important and and with more like-minded weirdos like me essentially so yeah I think that it's really good to let people in and then the final thing that I would do in terms of what to post um, is post about your schedule and what do I mean by that I mean the baseline of this idea is Everybody likes someone that's busy. If you're in demand, more people are going to want you. More people are going to go, ah, well, they're, they're after that person, so we should want them too. Everybody loves a busy person. So, And this can also be um, in tandem with your skills and in tandem with your personality. Let people into your day-to-day. -day. Let people into if you have gotten called for a gig this morning, there's 40 songs and I need to chart them for this gig tonight. Let people into that. Put a picture you know screenshot the song list go well i guess i'm learning these 40 songs for the, the next three hours and then i'm playing the gig tonight um you know let people into your process and you know a shot at a gig during sound check and and i do these more as sort of stories because they're more um uh, what's the word oh they're less permanent they're less permanent they're more fluid and people can just get a sense of who you are and what you're up to and I, I for a long time I've had this thing uh, this idea this concept which has worked in my favor I mean I don't know maybe it worked for you um, and this is it's this idea of living your life as if you're already doing the thing and um, when I really started leaning into this, I always had this as an idea even when I was a kid, but I didn't really know what that looked like when I was coming up because I'd never done tours. I didn't know what it looked like day to day. Um, but when I opened up my studio, my remote recording studio, um, I would get up every day and I would go to work in the studio as if I was recording for people all day long. And what happened was a couple of things. First of all, I was able to put up content, which is great, fine, whatever but it made me learn the skills that I needed to learn to then go do the job when it was happening um, and also streamline my processes and just work out how I was doing it. So it was actually really useful in a, on a personal level, on a skill set level, but what it also meant is that I could post about it. You know, I could say, you know, just setting up this session. You know, I didn't need to say that it was a session that I was you know was fictional and you know i'm actually just playing along to one of john mayer's tracks or whatever i mean it doesn't matter because the point is is that i'm just i'm keeping busy i'm keeping busy and people like a busy person they do they absolutely do does it matter if it's actually a session no because you're learning the skills and the skills are what matter and at some point you will start actually doing the thing because people will be drawn to you because they can see that you're doing it so therefore you know then it was oh no i'm actually doing a session for this person and then tagging that person um so yeah i think <sighs> instagram have a think consciously who is this for why am i using it and then just get people or allow people to know like and trust you within that context of the answer to those two questions and again it will be scary, it will feel vulnerable, it will feel difficult, you'll want to be perfect, don't be perfect. What is it? Ah, I came up with a saying the other day and I was like, that's quite cool. Um, oh, perfection negates connection. <laughs> oh no, I want to, come on. <laughs> perfection 
or ruins connection. Maybe that's better because I think negates doesn't work, but perfection ruins connection. So just, just put it out there. Be messy. You don't need to be crazy messy, but just let people into the bits that aren't perfect and a bit raw. Um, you know, like me not being able to do that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that, I mean, honestly, honestly, this whole podcast series is just about, it's a perpetual lesson and exercise for me in being vulnerable with you. And I find it hard. I do. I find it, I mean, it gets easier. It's gotten easier with time. I mean, geez, when did this start? 2018? It's been six years now. Don't get me wrong. There's been a couple of breaks in between. That's why we're only on episode whatever is 163, is it? Or something like that. Um, but it gets easier and it attracts people in a lovely honest open way like if you choose to be the vulnerable one first other people feel safer with you and especially when it comes to music there needs to be an element of vulnerability and in fact you know learning an instrument there needs to be an element of vulnerability in my coaching, there has to be an element of vulnerability. I can't help you if you're not honest with me. Um, and that starts with being honest with yourself. And if, you know, I'm the person here going, hey, this is how I'm feeling. This sucks. And you're going, oh my God, I feel that too. I didn't know that that's okay or normal or, you know, anyone else was feeling like this. I'm telling you now it is. And it's, um, it's hard, it's beautiful, it's fulfilling, it's wonderful. And that's all the stuff that you see on Instagram traditionally, you know, all the best bits, the highlight reels of people's lives. But I'm here to say there's all this other negative stuff and, and not even just positive and negative. There's all the gray in between um, that make it difficult and, as I say, fulfilling and rich and worth it. Like it's all those things. And as you work through them, you get to the other side and not to say that you get to the other side and don't go back again, but like, um, yeah, you realize, ah, yeah. First of all, if, ever, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. Let's just say that. But also there's this richness that comes with the hard work that you put in and the things that you overcome. Um, it wouldn't, it wouldn't feel so incredible if you didn't have to put in this much work. And, you know, there's a lot of self-reflection and, Oh, it's just, it's complicated, man. It's complicated, but uh, we're here. We do what we do, we move. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I hope this slight crazy ramble has um, helped you in some ways to boost your Instagram. And, and do you know what it is? It's just understanding why you're using it. I think there's so much power in that and, and just really using it to your advantage, taking some ownership of it in some respects, like, and just leveraging it. Leveraging it is a tool. It is a wonderful, powerful tool if you know how to use it. And if you just keep these things in mind, I think it will help. I hope it will help. Um, and on that note, I'm going to say, if this episode did help you, then please do feel free to like, share and subscribe. Um, if you'd like to support this podcast, you can do over on Patreon. If you go to patreon.com forward slash Emily Drums, that's patreon.com forward slash Emily Drums. Uh, and then if you also would like to see any other uh, like little mini content videos and stuff that I do on various subjects, then you can do over on my Instagram where I'm very vulnerable to day-to-day -day stuff all the stuff um and if you go to instra instagram.com forward slash hey emily drums or just go to at hey emily drums as you can tell i'm very happy that i've changed my instagram handle because i hated it before it didn't ro roll off the tongue but this one does hey emily drums um i don't know why i do a slight american accent every time i say it but here we are anyway i hope you're well i hope you're having a great day wherever you are whatever you're up to and i will see you next week for another episode all right see you later Mwah. bye